If watching porn and satisfying yourself can reduce the chances to fornicate or commit adultery, why not watch it? Well, I can I can see I can see the logic that okay, porn is something that you can do on your own. It doesn't necessarily directly um, Im Im impact anyone. There's a, there's, there's a Bible story which, which uh, comes to mind. I'll, I'll try and be more brief. Um, but it's, it's from the book of Joshua. In the book of Joshua, God called the uh, Israelites to, um, to, to take the promised land and, and to do that by, by fighting. Um, but he gave them instructions of how to do that. He said, um, when you conquer a city, do not take any of the plunder for yourself because the plunder is holy. It, it, is, it is for the Lord. And there was a guy called uh, Achan and he, he, he did take some of the plunder for himself and, and hid it away. No one else could see other than his own family. And because of this sin, um, Israel started to lose um, battles that they were fighting in and it, and it was only when Achan kind of uh, repented of that and was punished for it that that Israel can can move on um, and there's there's a biblical principle that whatever we, we do in secret will be will be revealed so like our, our secret devotional life with God whatever we do there it, it will come out in in some way and i think that there was an idea in the question that we can somehow control sin and and george put it very very well that in the c.s lewis quote that um nobody just grows overnight but in the same way nobody falls overnight and we might think of porn as maybe maybe like a tame and controllable sin but that that's another lie of 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 the devil um if he can get a bit of porn in one day, he'll get a bit more porn in the next day. And, and it's a really slippery slope and it gets harder and harder to, to, to stop. Um, and then the other thing just I'll add on is if, if, we're th if we're trying to think, okay, what sin can I get away with? What folly can I get away with? That's quite a negative way to think. And I'd encourage people to say, look, how can I give my best for Christ? How can I be most like him? rather than like, what can I get away with? Okay, <laughs> thank you, Jamie. Uh, Uncle Josh, do you have something to add to that question? Nothing, I mean, he perfectly shared it. Um, there's nothing um, that I have. Uh, as I said, it's only going to ask you, it's going to crave, your body's going to crave only for more. There is no end of the thing. You can't say, okay, I've arrived. No, you can't arrive in watching porn and say, I'm stopping something, no. I'm taking steroid infusion, five days, it's going to stop me from going into a progression. Okay, but it's not like that. Pornography is not like that. It's only going to crave more. Yeah, you cannot use one sin to stop another sin. So, yes. So uh, my uh, next question would be, is it okay to watch porn with your spouse to spice up your marital sex life? <laughs> for me there are three angles in this the first angle is why would i even watch someone who's been abused to enjoy an intimacy that is very pure with my wife why would i even watch some videos of somebody going through such abuse to enjoy a pure intimacy uh, with my wife two the moment we wire ourselves to get our wiring fulfilled from an external source, not from the God-given sex inside marriage, it's going to become a dangerous slope. It's going to become a dangerous slope. The third very important principle is that I don't want my wife to feel that I'm being turned on because of a video. No, I want her to feel I'm turned on because of her, because of her beauty because of who she is. And that's the perspective that I want to give to my wife that I'm fully committed to you and I love you and I enjoy you. And as Jamie said, sex is actually not a bad word. It's actually a good word. God created sex. 
you know and inside marriage it's so important to be focused on the partner god has given you right so my next question is uh, is masturbation a sin even if you do not watch porn okay i i i read read that question uh, earlier um i would i would reply with a question and i would say has anybody ever masturbated and kept their mind fully pure and i would i would suggest that that is impossible um so that that's my kind of quick quick reply um okay. yeah yeah i i will just ask i always ask teenagers this question okay i'm sorry for the humor if you are able to masturbate looking at a sunflower or a moon tree <laughs> then it's okay <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you well uh the next question is what is our role as a christian if one of our family members is addicted to pornography or online chatting apps okay there is somewhere deep down this person is longing for love and i think it's very important that we don't become a judgmental place where we judge them and brand them and crucify them rather to see how we can be that um person in the gap who can love them and see how we can bring healing into their lives that they would move out of this place you know and that's what i would do rather than getting upset with them and branding them and things like that i've sometimes caught my own sons in pornography but i the time i caught them i spent more time with them so i'm able to spend more time with them restoring them and helping them come out that's the whole point you know and that's my perspective thank you uh jamie do you have anything to add to it no i agree yeah just be there love them um often other people are the best people to know how they need help so if they know that we are available to them they will often show us how to how to help them um so yeah agree with george the next question is uh, can you fall into addiction even if you have strong relationship with jesus um can you fall into a addiction um yes would, would would be my my short answer like none of us are so much in relationship with jesus that we're no longer subject to the the fallen, fallen world or or tit or sin or temptation um yeah even jesus he he faced temptation all the way up through his ministry um notably in gethsemane there was a strong temptation to find another way and he looked for another way he said father if there's another way please 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 make it so take this cup from me but but there was no other way and and so jesus had to um you know go, go the way the the father was asking him to be um to go yeah and please understand this if your relationship is very strong with jesus you're going to be the target for the devil hmm understand that you know you we don't say saying oh, my relationship is so strong with jesus so oh, i overcome everything and i walk away no you're going to become the biggest to target one of the things that i do with my iphone with my um, mac and with the, all my emails and everything if i've synced it on icloud that my wife gets a copy of every email even a photo that i click on my phone she gets it on the icloud on her phone every message that comes on facebook and instagram she gets a copy of it why did i set this up about 4 5 years ago from a place of accountability that i i am don't become that prey for the devil we have to be on guard because he's like a roaring lion trying to devour whom he wants to so we need to be on guard if your relationship is very strong with jesus be on guard okay all right uh, uh, i i just have one uh, question for you guys uh It, uh, related to this now uh, what we spoke about right now is about the temptation like obviously uh, we are not going to uh, be we will be tempted but then the question here was can you fall into addiction okay 
while staying close to god i mean um i think it's already been answered this question should not be even coming because addiction is not one time suddenly you fall it's over a period of time that you do it again and again if you are close with jesus and then you say i can fall into addiction it's almost like an oxymoron you know how can you be so close with jesus walking with jesus in conviction and then fall into an addiction if you are really close with jesus you cannot fall into addiction addiction is something that you have done over a period of time and it has enslaved you if you are really close with jesus but if you are simply using the word jesus jesus and being religious and walking uh, walking out and things like that yes you can be addicted you know that's my simple answer yeah i was i was walking around my local area recently and uh, meeting uh, different people met one guy and he, he, he quite quickly he told me he he's a drug addict and this is someone who wasn't a, a believer and what what i try to say to people is god god has made us this way he's made us as people who are possible to fall into uh, addiction he's made us as people who can experience intense pleasure um but but we are made to find that pleasure in in god so i i think i think addiction it 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 can be a really good thing but it's it's when we when we find it in god and then we get no hangover and we just we just get uh, joy um yeah so so i'd say christian i'd say get addicted to god more and more and more the uh, the word that you spoke that uh, when you said that you know it's always good to be around friends like especially when you're fi- uh, finding it difficult or you're going through addiction with porn it's good to be around friends but one of the person asked what if these are the friends who has got you hooked into pornography at first place and you do not have any one any friend around you who knows jesus who has a personal relationship with jesus so in that case what do you do um <clears throat> i can see how that's a that's a really hard situation um myself i came to faith when i was 19 um <clears throat> before i came to faith i was <laughs> i was very against christianity very vocally against so i had i did not have christian friends um on, honestly change your your friends change change the people who you hang around with um there there will be elders and there will be pastors people like george who who have kind of set up their lives to be available to even strangers and and people who are new in the faith it's not an easy thing but um yeah the the, the people who we spend our time with has a huge influence on us and this this change might take months or or years but but in the end it's like what what direction is our life going in and and you'll you'll find like um if you are going closer and closer to god in in your life and you have friends who you've grown up with who are not going closer to god it's it's sad but it's a reality of life that that you will you will have different paths um but 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 for us i mean paul paul lost many things in his life but but he gained christ and he valued christ as higher than any other thing and and he really is um and 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 that's why our relationships will change over time but you know f- find find someone who is paid to be a minister of christ and it's their job to be there for you there's always <laughs> someone who who you can find um if 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 you look don't limit god even if you are alone and you need a friend god can bring a friend i can sit and tell you about several stories of people in the middle east i just finished speaking at a session with people in iraq syria and jordan and i can tell you stories of how god brought friends for some of these people don't limit god even in a difficult situation don't let's not glorify our situation no glorify god he is able and more than able hmm. big god small problem small god big problem i leave you with that <laughs> if you see god as big small problems if you see god as small you will have big problems big god small problem small god big problems <laughs>